In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use Semantic to set up an analytical workflow for comparing design options in Power BI. So you can see here is I have a Rhino file set up that has a series of massing design options for an urban development. Um, each of these design options has data um, assigned to it. So if I click through and look at some of these floor slabs, you can see that there are some different categorizations um, and costing values assigned to them. You'll also see that under this design setting, there is a design option parameter that's assigned to each of these. So you can see here in this particular um, set of geometries, uh, they are assigned to design option one. And so if we look at the report manager for itemized objects, you can see that we have a number of different objects that are being reported here in the Rhino environment. And each of these objects has a design option assigned. And what I want to do is inside of Power BI, um, visualize each of these design options in parallel um, and have it set up to where I can start to formulate comparisons between these design options. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is activate the Rhino 3D visual that comes with Semantic. And that's going to create an instance in my Power BI canvas. And it's also going to be asking me then to upload a file to the visual. So I'm going to go ahead and find my uh, mixed use design 3DM file that can, is containing that geometry with design options. Go ahead and click open. And so now I have uh, the visual um, has sort of been loaded with that information. And then I need to start satisfying some of the visual inputs here. So you can see that I have an Excel spreadsheet that's been imported in. Um, and if we take a look at the data here, uh, we'll be able to see an itemized listing of all of my Rhino objects. You can see I have my Rhino object ID, um, department info, building info. And you'll see that there's a column here for design option as well. So if I go back to this tab, what I want to do is first satisfy my uh, Rhino GUID input. So I'm going to find my object ID and put that into the Rhino GUID input. And what this is going to do is it's going to set up the model um, and it's going to be displaying every piece of geometry here. So you can see that um, all four design options are kind of coexisting on the same location in the model um, because when the visual opens up, uh, it needs to kind of be told what information to show. It's not like um, it's maintaining the layer states from Rhino. Um, so we have to be able to control that from the Power BI side. So with the newer version of the semantic uh, Rhino visual, um, there is a field here called view. And what view allows us to do is define a kind of grouping parameter, which will auto-generate a series of individual 3D views that contains um, the geometry based on that kind of classification or grouping. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to take the option field um, out of that table and place it into the view input. And because we had four design options, what the visual is going to do is it's going to parse those four options into four separate views in Power BI. So now we have four separate 3D views existing in the same visual and the rotation of the camera is linked. So as I rotate around um, one of these options, you can see that the, the parallel views and the other options are, are also rotating with. So we now have four options being displayed here. What I might also do here is take the department uh, parameter and put this into the category field. That way we're going to be able to see the kind of geometry being colored um, in each viewport. So it makes our design options stand out a little bit more. And of course, I could go in and you know, start to customize the color of, of each of these um, options if I wanted to. Um, but what I think is kind of interesting is also setting up things like slicers. So right now this is showing all four design options in parallel. What I'm going to do is set up a slicer off to the side here. And the slicer is going to contain the design option as well. And so now I have options one through four. And let's say I want to take a look at option one and compare it with option three. So now I have just options one and three displayed and I can kind of start to see those side by side. And if I want to you know, open up option four, um, it's going to you know, now have options 
1, 3, and 4 are displayed in parallel. So this view input is a really powerful way to start to slice up your information using kind of a grouping or a categorization field. In this case, I'm grouping the geometry by uh, design option, which can be a uh, you know, a technique for comparing design options. Um, what I can also do is if I wanted to have, say, let's just say option one set up here, um, but maybe I want to group the geometry based on the department. So I want to see each department uh, visualized individually. So what I can do is jump back over to this visual here. I'm going to clear out my view for option, and then I'm going to place in department instead. And what this is going to do is it's going to generate now six views. And these six views are showing me um, the individual programmatic components. Um, and I can start to see those in parallel too. So there might be a number of different use cases for how you might choose to use this view grouping field, um, whether it's comparing building systems, um, program uh, arrangements, or uh, comparing the design options in your project. Um, so hopefully this is a, a useful feature inside of the semantic uh, package, um, and hopefully you can get some good use out of it and create some interesting dynamic dashboards with parallel viewing of geometry.